What's up guys, Joe here, welcome back to my channel and today we are back with episode 15 I think now of the Uno X career. Hopefully we can times that by 10 by the end of the series, hit 150 by the conclusion. Anyhow, heading into the 2022 season, we'll keep things current I think for the moment. Magnus Court is having an unbelievable Vuelta a España in real life and hopefully we can maybe reproduce some of those performances here. And looking at the calendar, I am actually on the last day of the UEE Tour right now. I have played the race. I will be showing you highlights first up today. Uh, so we'll get into that very shortly. But live coming today, we will be playing the Omelie Pet Newsblad, Kerna, lots of Belgian classics. Also some Italian classics, including Strada Bianca. Cannot wait for that one, of course. So we have some classics coming up today. But first, let's take a look at how things went for us at the UEE Tour. So we did have the objective from our sponsor to try and get a stage win in the UEE. You can see, of course, we do have many a sprint stage at the UEE Tour, but we also have many a good sprint here as well. Great lead out on the first stage. Hal Vorsen went for the line. Sam Bennett, the world champion, can't come round, but Dylan Grunewagen on the left-hand side had his own lead out train, and he was the strongest right there. So we start off with a very, very strong second place, but still, we are looking for that stage of victory. Next up though, Hatter Dam, the steepest finish in cycling, or at least one of them. And you can see Sharma getting blocked in by his teammate, really far out of position. Surely no chance for a stage victory from here, but we continue pressing on. Fred Wright versus Sharma, and we cannot quite come back, but we do make it two runners up in a row. Not quite what we hoped for, we have to take it. And then, of course, we did have the first ascent of Jebel Hafiz, the queen stage of the race. In fact, we have two climbs of this edition of the UE Tour for some reason. It was, I think, the COVID year where they had to cut out the other climb at the race. And you can see Sharmig coming to the front, really pressing on. I didn't actually attack right there. I tried to conserve some energy by not pressing the attack button, just really upping the effort cursor to the mid-90s or uh, the early 90s briefly. So we are at the front of the race right now. The likes of Remco Evnepoel, surely the pre-race favourite. He's in the group behind with Alexei Lutsenko into the final few kilometres right now. And we do try a little kick off the front of that little breakaway group as I saw the Peloton sense them coming back on. Matej Mohoric actually trying to bridge up to me. Definitely not a pure climber and somehow here's the man marking us with 1k to go. And so you can see Sharmig's energy is highly depleted as we come under the Flamme Rouge. I can't really kick to the line. I think we probably have the position to win the stage but Sharmig just didn't quite have it in him. I probably went too early, too aggressive on the plus four, and Massey Mohoric beats Andrea Van Drame on Yebel Hafi. Not sure what happened there. Remco was uh, third place. We just missed out on bonus seconds, but it was a great result, as you can see, because we did gain 15 seconds on pretty much everyone by the four riders we finished with at the front. And now on to the third opportunity for Chris Halvorsen in the sprints. And I tried a different tactic today. I tried to place Halvorsen at the front and I did take the wheel of Sam Bennett. I saw the quick step Vu lead out just waiting for us almost right at the front and Hal Vorsen had to take that wheel. Surely that is going to be a better wheel than our own team. So we're on Sam Bennett's wheel, coming under the Flamme Rouge, literally couldn't be in a better position right now. Can we kick past Bennett again? We just don't quite have the power. I felt like I did everything that I personally could have done to try and win that stage. We get a top three, just missing out again. But uh, really enjoyed that, trying to follow the lead out of Quick Step. And now we have the second ascent of Yebo Hafit then. This will probably decide the race. I think we have a flat stage after this or two flat stages to come. Anyway, we're trying to again move to the front with Sharmik without using that attack button, just upping the effort cursor into the high 80s and low 90s. This time, Remco Evnepoel is right to the front and he is trying to attack and follow the best climbers in the race rather than waiting, probably too late like he did in uh, the previous ascent of Yebo Hafit. And Sergio Samissier is the aggressor on this climb right now. And he has made a really aggressive early move. We're in a pretty good position with Sharmik. We don't quite have the best race day uh, compared to the plus four we just have on the previous ascent of the climb. And I can really feel it now. I am going to try and take Remco Evnepoel's wheel. And Samitier still out front. He is holding on the Movistar rider. Definitely not the favorite for this climb pre-stage, but he is going to win the stage, holding off the attacks of Vendrame and Mary Van Savenen just up the road. Sharmik though, we will just about die to the line, but we will get the same time as Remco Evnepoel again. So we are matching Remco so far at the UE Tour, but Sergio Samissier was just 
too good on that occasion. He does take the stage win. Uh, Vendrame and Van Savenen got a time gap, and that does mean Andrea Vendrame is in the perfect position to win the UE Tour. And he would go on to win the race, actually. Absurd result for Andrea Vendrame. And still we are without a stage win. We have one final sprint stage to do it. It's that very weird hairpin corner with just over 1k to go. I tried to go early with Hal Warson, but we were blocked in. And we will have to settle for a place behind Sam Bennett, who destroyed everyone right there. I think we were fourth place in the end at the UE Tour. And so I have navigated to the PCM Career Explorer just so you guys can get a quick overview of the race. We did finish third overall with Anton Sharmig. Really great result due to those bonus seconds, but uh, not quite the win. And Drevan Drame guessing the win. Can't quite believe it. We were top three on four stages in total without getting that sponsor objective of the victory. And you can see we won the youth rankings with Sharmik. Also second just behind Kroonervagen uh, with Hal Vorsen in the green jersey. So really a race of near these, but a very strong showing nonetheless. Next up, though, we do have Omloop Het Newsblad. I really cannot wait for this race. The first classic of the season. This really announces the start of the classics, doesn't it? And some uh, say this announces the start of the cycling season. Omloop Het Newsblad. Let's get underway and see what we can do. First, though, of course, we have to take a look at our lineup. And, of course, Magnus Corp will be here. Marcus Hulegaard will be here as well. And uh, Hulegaard, based on his cobble stat, is our leader, but Magnus Court is probably a stronger rider overall, so we'll see what the race days are like. I'm pretty sure, though, it will be one of those two riders leading us today. And this, I think, today, uh, our set of seven riders are probably going to be our classic squad throughout the entire classic season. So keep an eye on these guys. This is going to be our team we take throughout Belgium and, of course, to Roubaix. Well, that's decided then. Magnus Court gets a plus four day. He is going to be our leader here at Omni Pet News Blab. But first, I think, as the flag is waving, Let's try and get Jonas Vidderberg up the roads in the breakaway. What he does best, really. So Vidderberg trying to kick off his classic season in the right way. Phil Bear trying to join him. I'll show you guys after the episode, though. I'll show you what I've done with the planner because I have tried to really scatter the races, the objectives between Magnus Courts and Hulagard. So we have at least one of those guys in great shape for all of the classics throughout the classic season. And today, of course, is Magnus Court targeting Omni Pet News Blad. The final breakaway has formed only six riders. Vidderberg is here. Phil Gilbert, like I said, you can see the other guys. Fairly strong group, to be fair. Battistella um, as well in the group, as well as Jorgensen, of course. Most of the big classics riders are here. Highlighted by Kasper Askreen, Wout van Aert, Matthew Van Zippel, Peter Sagan. The list goes on. Just under 90k to go then. The breakaway have just over a two minute lead. We haven't had any attacks whatsoever so far from any of the favourites. You can see though, with the terrain coming up, I expect that will change. Oh, look at this. Look at this. A double puncture for us. Werenschgold and Russell both puncture on the same set. So how unlucky. 55k to go. We are now hitting the cobbles proper. And we do have a few splits forming in the group. A couple of riders are getting dropped as well. Maybe I could attack with Hulagard up to the front of the race. Maybe that could be an option for us. Let's see if he's allowed clear right now. Let's see if Marcus Hulagard can join the front of the race. He's really a free card, I guess, today uh, due to the form of Magnus Court. So let's see. So there we go. Hulagard is on to the front. He spent a lot of energy, to be fair. He could probably just help out Vidderberg with the pacing right now. This group really not working too well together. I don't know why they don't want to press on and try and maybe win this race. Watching in the pedals from behind with Magnus Court. He will follow Van Aert. He will follow any of the big favourites, of course, but still no moves. All right, and now we're seeing this race really get shaken up quite considerably. Wrestle is pretty done. Wearing gold. You can try and protect Magnus Court because Wout Van Aert has just gone off the front. Now Vias is tempering. Van Marker is off the front as well. Hulagard, he can probably work for Vidderberg at this stage despite the cobbles we have left, which definitely suits Hulagard more. Let's take a look at Magnus Court and try and hold on to the front. Now as Van Aert and of course Van der Poel will surely be putting the hammer down. And right now, 33 riders at the front were getting blocked off so badly right there. Wisinowski, I think that was. I really want to get to the front of this race so I can mark the likes of, of course, Wout van Aert. Maybe we can try and join Phil Gio at the front with Vidderberg too. Let's attack Troyer and try and join Phil Gio at the front of Omloop. That is what I've been able to do with Vidderberg. We are pretty much done though. Court can sit up. We are starting to see attacks from the favourite, so probably worth sitting up to help out Magnus Courts. Here we go then. Here we go. Look at this. We have attacks. We have attacks. 
Ajax attacking up to Vidiburg and hopefully these guys go clear because then Vidiburg can of course pull in this group and help out Magnus Court. We have 14 at the front. This is just absolutely absurd. Let's try and protect Magnus Court whilst we can. Another really tough coupled sector. I cannot surely follow that. I cannot surely follow that with Magnus Court. Let's try and go 95. Try to stay to the front but I can see it's going to be so so difficult on this coupled set so we have four riders clear however over the top of the cobbled sector do we have the energy with magnus court just to attack this group we're currently in and try to get to van art and van der Poel. i think we're just about going to bring them in we have 12 riders at the front of the race there goes wout van art there goes wout van art we'll have to settle in try and work with these guys we have askrin Bessio, van der Poel, sagan van bala benut laporte vermeersh van marker and Oli narsen and i think the winner will come from that group however van der Poel is going to put in a big dig trying to bring in Wout Van Aert. We don't really have many more cobbled sectors, so this is really the group that could be going to the line. And here we go. Wout Van Aert is caught. 15 kids go. He probably went too early. We need some water with Magnus Court. Three riders trying to get back on. I think it's too late for those guys though. Oh my word, I just cannot get water. It is constant attacks here at Omelette Pet News Blad. Oh, this is so, so tough. Just trying to surf the wheels, try to stay to the front of the race. I need the water though, if I can get it. You can see as soon as one attack ends, I need to follow another, and this time it's proving very difficult to do so. 10k to go and Kasper Askren has managed to get a gap on a number of other riders. Let's follow maybe Sagan who is struggling. Let's not follow Sagan then. Maybe this is a moment to get water. To be honest we're going to have to make do with the water we have at the moment which is none. So right now we're not favourite for this race but we do have a decent sprint. I am going to try and surf the wheels with Magnus Court. 18 riders are further back led by Alex Kristoff. We can maybe relay at 65. That's probably fair. Uh, but Kasper Askren looking good to win Omni Pet News Blad. And so 3k to go. I have moved up to follow Wout van Aert. We can use our gel. Askren is still out front. Oli Narsen is working. He's putting in a dig. We're in a great place. And Askren could be caught right now. Vermeersh is working for Matthew van der Poel. We're in a great wheel following Wout van Aert. Oh my. This could be a brilliant finish for us right now. Here goes Wout van Aert going for the line. There goes Magnus Court Nielsen. Does he have enough left to come through and win on Blue News Blad? Oh my words. Are we going to do it? Are we going to do it? Magnus Court Nielsen wins on Blue Bear news blad let's go no energy left and i cannot believe we have pulled that off come on oh my word i am absolutely speechless how have we won that race i moved up with about four or five k's go from right at the back of the group which i was sitting on absolutely abusing didn't have any energy to be fair and i followed wout van Aert, uh with about four or five k's to go we stuck there and he was in just a perfect position. We had uh, Gianni Vermeersh, who was working to bring back Askren for his teammate Matthew Van Der Poel, but to no avail for him. Sagan couldn't win it. Van Aert had it in his grasp. He just died on the line. And, oh, we died on the line as well. We just timed it so perfectly. And Magnus Court Nielsen is the winner of Omloop Het News Blad. On we go then to Kerner, Brussels Kerner. It's been a few days since I played that Omloop Het News Blad. But, again, we do have Magnus Court Nielsen probably leading us today. Here's our better sprinter at the race. But the likes of Van der Poel, Sagan, they're going to be quite difficult to beat. Away we go then. And yes, again, Jonas Vidderberg is in the early breakaway. You can see some of the other guys we have up the road. Not even sure what country that is. Kazakhstan? Kyrgyzstan, maybe? Not quite sure. I'm actually going to check after this race. Tim Van Dyke, a former Jumbo Visma dev rider up the road as well as Vidderberg, like I mentioned. And I was right. Kyrgyzstan mm. it is uh, where Luzkan is from. These videos, guys, they're even educational. What more could you wish? for. So the race hasn't been too selective. I have lost a couple riders though. Hulgard and Russell have been dropped by the front of the race. 54 riders now in this main group. Now Vyas again on the front working for his team. Sagiv is he trying to bridge up or was he in the breakaway? Not quite sure. I think he must have been dropped here. But Vidiberg still at the front. The breakaway looking very strong. Oh and Magnus Court Nielsen has been caught on the cobbles. We were blocked off terribly and we are actually dropped from the front of the race. I'm going to try a huge attack right now to bridge back on. We'll keep Marcus Hulegaard up the road. The rest of our domestiques have been pretty much dropped as well. Hopefully Magnus Court, they can get on ASAP. We have the energy to spend and we are back on. That is perfect. Okay, so Court and Hulegaard at the front. We can deal with that. So the breakaway is now coming apart. I've tried to attack with Vidaberg. Tried to uh, make sure we're staying to the front of the race. We still have over a minute 
on the main bunch. So this could be quite selective and Vindeberg could still have a key role to play in this race. There we go then, Vindeberg has been caught. This looks to be coming down to a mass sprint. We have had an attack by Oli Nars and we'll probably have to react. Vindeberg is going to have to relay. We don't have a rider up the roads at this stage, so happy to work. What is going on? Is this a counter attack? No idea because Van Hooker is trying to attack up to his teammate and he's bringing him back in. AG2R with an absolute disaster class. So 10k to go, it's Mike Tunison attacking alongside Oli Narsen. If I follow with one of these riders, I just want to see what happens if maybe a reduced bunch does in fact go up the road. Marissa is not the rider to follow, apparently. Let's try and get in Matthew Vanderpool's wheel with Magnus Court Nielsen and see if maybe we can get a select group up the roads. Look at this, Matthew Vanderpool is the right wheel to be on here. counter attacking as we're lapping riders, by the way. Narsen, Seneschal, Tunison up the road alongside us. Only 5k to go now. So in the group behind, Marcus Hulegaard has managed to follow Sam Bennett. We are glued to Matthew Vanderpool's wheel right now with Magnus Court Nielsen. Could we make maybe counter attack right here? Oh, it doesn't seem so. It doesn't seem so at all. Let's maybe try and follow Dylan Van Baala if we can with Magnus Court Nielsen just to keep things stringed out for Marcus Hulegaard. If nothing else, only 1k to go. Let's launch towards the line. There goes Magnus Court. Hulegaard guard from behind. Who's going to take it? It is going to be the world champion, Sam Bennett, winning at Kerner, Brussels Kerner. For us, it's not the best result, to be fair. I think we'll sneak into the top 10. Yes, we will. So I think we'll have to take it. Pretty solid results today, if not spectacular. Maybe I should have sent Hulegaard up the road and followed Bennett with Magnus Court. Would have probably been much higher, but uh, we wouldn't have won the race, I'm pretty sure. Sam Bennett, the world champion, is just a bit quick. I forgot to mention as well, that was an objective. They wanted a top three at that race and we failed. The second failed objective of the episode after four successful objectives to start the season. We need to uh, turn this around, although I say that. Our sponsor confidence is at 100% still. Heading to Le Man this time. It's a dot one race, not a uh, World Tour race. So the competition is going to be a little easier. And Magnus Court is on the favourite screen. And again, it is the same team. We have a pretty similar team for all of the Belgian classics right now. And the two Italian classics coming up later in the episode. I think we will be racing for Marcus today though. He's on a plus one. Magnus Court a minus four. So uh, I don't think he's going to be up to it. But again, let's try and get a rider in the break. Breakaway. So it's Morton Hulgar we get in today's breakaway and not a very strong breakaway at all. We have, uh, was that Cepeda? Jefferson Alvaro Cepeda or Alexander, I think, Cepeda, his brother, up the road in the breakaway. Not really his type of race, I would probably suggest. I swear, every time we look at the front of the peloton, it's Jonathan Narvaez at the front, a good rider. Bit of a shame he's only in the Yombo Visma team to be a domestique, but uh, he could probably win this race, to be honest. Uh, looking at his attributes anyway. Sam Bennett is here, so we definitely need to try and drop this man, which is why I have Hulgaard on the front, trying to make it difficult. So right now we have 10k to go. Gianni Moscon is just up the road. We have a couple other riders. Is that Stockbro trying to attack as well? Maybe if Hulgaard follows him, Wernschgold can sit up. Maybe we can force a move off the front. Doesn't seem so. Is Tim de Klerk trying to attack for quick step? Not too sure. Let's maybe get in the wheel and just see what happens here in the wheel of the big Belgian. Oh, and look at this. We are going clear right now. Tim de Klerk, the tractor. That is what you call a tractor on the front of proceedings right there. Let's get Hulagar back in the wheel of Magnus Court Nielsen. We only have 4k to go. I think we have to set this up for a sprint. 3k to go. Quieto is still trying something. Now let's go up to 90 with Wrestle. And our guys are really feeling this effort. There goes Tunison. There goes Moscon. Let's not lead out anyone to the line. Hater is here. Sam Bennett is still here. Dylan Van Baala is going to the line. 1.4k to go. It's an uphill finish. Here goes Wrestle. Here goes Magnus Court. And here goes Marcus Allgaard all the way to the line. Here comes Bennett, though. I said we couldn't bring him to the line, but he wasn't the man to watch. It was Ethan Hayter who wins today. Bennett does take second. We just miss out on a podium in a very competitive finish. Again, a good performance, but Sam Bennett, Ethan Hayter, we can't really take those guys to the line. Ethan Hayter, though, what a talented rider this man is, both in game and in real life. I cannot wait to see what he can do. Next up, though, we do head to Italy for La Guelia. This is a really fun, hilly classic in the build-up to Strada Bianca, one of my favourite races of the season for sure. You can see our squad we are lining up with. This will be our team for Strada as well. Obviously, we're quite powerful with Courts, Hulagard, in Belgium, 
Maybe not so powerful here, you could argue, but hopefully Rasmus Tiller and maybe some other guys are in top form. So this does seem to be the tactic I'm sticking with so far today. And discuss it though, it's our early rider in the break where you can see the other guys in the group as well. But Sharmig and Train, they're good climbers, they're on good days, but Rasmus Tiller in that beautiful, I'm going to say it's beautiful Norwegian jersey, he's the best rider we have that can sprint as well. And I do think this is going to come down to a sprint, so we definitely want to try and nurse him to the line. Interesting stage of the race. I thought I wouldn't see you till the final hilly section, but we do have an attack of four riders, and now we do have Barcello bridging away up to the front of the race. A very good rider would make this breakaway more powerful. So on the second ascent of the decisive climb today, really so far out of position, this is going to be so, so selective. I can hardly believe it, to be honest. And Tiller and anyone in our team is really going to struggle. And so 20k to go, penultimate ascent right now. Torsten Train and Rasmus Tiller need to move up right now, right here, because we are so far out of position still. Sharmig is looking very good, and he's our only rider looking good right now. Oh my word, now we've had attacks before the penultimate climb, and quite big ones as well. I was trying to get Rasmus Tiller back in. We have done so, but now... We have attackers somewhere up the road and entering the final climb with a fair advantage as well. It's not ideal. Geshka, Jakpo Mosca, Quinton Herman, some of those riders. Oh my word, the blocks on this climb are far from ideal. We are slowly making our way through with Train, but Sharmik, our leader, oh, just cannot get past. But Mosca luckily does seem to be struggling a little and he is out front alone, which does make me think we can maybe get Tiller to the line. Let's attack this descent with Anton Sharmig right here with Mosca out alone. Okay, we have 6k to bring this in. Can we do so? We now have attacks from the likes of Soup Hermans. We do have some fairly quick riders here, so it's far from a secured win with, of course, Rasmus Tiller and he's struggling for energy as well. 5k to go, Mosca still out front, but we are killing his chances. So Sharmig working so, so hard right now. Batagleen, we have Valgren. Mosca has been caught and Tiller, I think, is going to be struggling to sprint for this victory. We're going to have to make a, a late change, a late decision to change this up. Anton Sharma can get on the wheel of Quinton Hermans right now, being led out by Michael Valgren. It's almost the perfect wheel to be in, but Sharma just isn't quite quick enough in a sprint, I feel. Hermans dies to the line. Sharma comes late, but it is going to be Tom Schoen's taking the stage. We get top five again, but we do miss out on that podium. Oh, frustrating ends. We needed to nurse Tiller, we didn't quite manage to do it. And the riders who finished above us, much better sprinters than Paul Anton Sharmig. But a top five for him, another very good result for the Danish Alaphilippe. But now it is the big one, Strada Bianca. I've been looking forward to this race so, so much. Alaphilippe second Seneschal, some of the favourites today. Quinn Simmons as well, one of the favourites for De Rosa, but... Our squad, led by Rasmus Tiller, maybe Sharmig. Can we make an impression on the top riders here? We don't have Magnus Court, who probably would have been our leader, but uh, let's see what we can do nonetheless. Away we go then. I'm trying to get some riders in the breakaway. I know that on PCM, the breakaway can be fairly powerful at Strada Bianca. It's a fairly difficult task right now, but hopefully at least Scarset can join that breakaway. But a lot of riders currently are interested. Sepp Kuss. For example, Brambia, who's been on the podium here before, he's interested as well. And Scarset starts to struggle. I have actually attacked with Nicholas Larson to try and join his teammate up the road. So it looks like we're going to have a four-man breakaway in the end. Danny Martinez is here. Van Hills is here as well as two Uno X riders. This is a great situation for us. So we are on the first real substantial graveled section of the race. And this is where being in the breakaway really comes into play. Scarset and Larson, they're not the best riders here at this race. But their energy looks great, particularly when they still have four minutes on the pedals. On the likes of Sharmeg Train, they may struggle with that cobbled stat on the uh, one-star graveled sectors. And that is really showing now. Sharmeg has been dropped from the front of the race. Tiller, though, looking absolutely fine on the gravel. And Sharmeg really having to aggressively press back on. We still have 63k to go. And now this phase of the race on the Monte San Marie. I think this is where the race can really kick off. I am marking the likes of Pagacha, the likes of Alaphilippe with Rasmus Tiller, Sharmeg and uh, Torsten the Train. They're not really good enough, I don't think, on the gravel to really challenge for this race. And this has become selective so, so rapidly. We have 37 left in the race. No attached just yet. And we still have our two riders up the road, remember, in that breakaway. 
And when you see the likes of Maxi Shackman, the likes of Primoz Roglic out the back, you know it has been an uber selective day. This is crazy stuff. And still exiting this gravel sector very shortly, we have those two riders up the roads. So Sharmig is struggling. I'm wondering if we could maybe try and bridge with Tiller to that breakaway. Surely that's too aggressive. But uh, having those riders up the roads to maybe attack up to with Tiller is definitely an option for us as just riders dropping out the back slowly from the race. 26 now at the front. And still we wait for attacks though from the main group. Whilst we have numerous quick step riders here, Cataneo, Bagioli, Seneschal as well, working for Alaphilippe, I can't really try and attack. They'll just surely reel me in. As Van Hills has attacked the rest of the breakaway, that's fine, we're gonna take it a little more steady. Okay then, 25 at K to go and still the breakaway dangle out front. Scarsa is going to try and attack and Tiller still staying to the front. We may as well just stay here as Peter Sagan punctures at the unluckiest of moments. And here we go. This is where we need to react as Terji is thinking about some kind of attack. So is Madawas. Do I follow that? Potentially as Scarsa is well up the road now. 21k to go. And so it seems this breakaway has become an expedition trying to win the Strada Bianca. What on earth is going on? Tell us, sat behind, we just need to mark moves. They still have over a minute in that group. I can't believe we haven't seen more attacks yet. And Scarset, you know, he is slowly dropping Maxime Van Hills. He is starting to struggle. I think we can probably think about winning if it is decided from the breakaway. Jonathan Novaya's attacks, I missed it. Jonathan Novaya's attacks, that surely will spring Alaphilippe and the like into life. I'm just gonna mark this man, I think. And so I think on this climb, we are going to attack Maxime Van Hill. Surely he cannot follow. Let's push it to 80 and try and bridge away to victory. Narvaez is trying to catch us. Oh, we can't really, we can't really allow him in. Here we go, Madawas is on the attack. Alaphilippe is trying to follow. So is Gianni Vermeersh. I think we are going to finally catch Anders Garcet, potentially with Rasmus Tiller. Oh, we're blocked off. Alaphilippe is blocked off by Narvaez. Can I counter that with Tiller up to the group? But we don't want to catch these guys. Let's take advantage of being able to sit in with Anders Garcet up the road. And oh, we have to play the numbers game here. And so Tiller is going to bring bridge up to Scarsa. He's going to go up to 99 and just help out his compatriots so, so briefly because he's almost done as well. Scarsa trying to bring Rasmus Tiller to the front of Strada Bianca. Let's cling on right now. It's the final chance to really get away as Scarsa is done. Let's just hold horses because we don't really have the energy to attack, I don't think. And this is going to come down to some kind of sprint. So Scarsa is going to lead the peloton into the final descent if we can get Tilla onto that final climb at the front of the race. He is going to be in the prime position. So she is here. Alaphilippe Vermeersh, Sagan, Quinn Simmons as well in the American Champions jersey. Let's go up to 99 with Scarset. There goes Taji. There goes Taji. I missed his wheel with Tilla. Oh no, I missed the wheel. I missed the wheel. There goes Alaphilippe as well. And I think Alaphilippe is just too much at Strada Bianca. Julian Alaphilippe is going to win. Ah. Oh, I could have had a podium. I think we're gonna to have to settle for fourth place here. Another fourth place or even fifth if Sagan passes us. It's gonna be the episode of what could have been. It's an all French podium at Strada Bianca and we're the best of the rest. No shame at all in fourth place here, but when you're so close to a podium, so close to the victory, you can't help but dream in that final. But Julian Alaphilippe, he is of course a different level. And looking at the rankings early on in the season, of course, we are top Four. I was going to say top five. We're top four. We're fourth in the Super Prestige standings. Only behind Ineos Yombo Visma and Quickstep. It is an unbelievable start to our season. We cannot complain at all. And we have two riders in the top ten. A series of really nice results in today's episode. That Omloop victory was my favourite moment probably of the series so far. Still absolutely loving it. I think in the next one we may go to the Volta Ciclista at Catalonia and see exactly what we can do in Spain. Nonetheless, if you enjoyed today's video, make sure you smash that like button. Let me know you're still enjoying Uno X. Drop a like if you're new to the channel. And I will see you guys in the next one.